let's face it, America, Joe Biden is the most radical left president this country has ever had. Amid an unprecedented wave of anti-Semitism metastasizing all across the United States, the Biden White House has decided that now was the perfect time to announce the first ever national strategy to counter Islamophobia. Yes, really. I am proud to announce the Biden-Harris administration will develop our nation's first national strategy to counter Islamophobia. This strategy will be a comprehensive and detailed plan to protect Muslims and those perceived to be Muslim from hate, bigotry, and violence. Do you know what percentage of hate crimes are actually against Muslims? According to the FBI, last year, Muslims accounted for about 8% of hate crime victims. Do you know how many Jews are the victims of hate crimes, according to the FBI? We'll take a listen to FBI Director Christopher Wray. The point that I was trying to make there, which I really think Americans need to understand, is how wildly disproportionate if you could ever use a word like proportionate in something like this, that is. 2.4% of the American yeah. public, 60% right. of religious-based hate crimes. And so uh, this is a group that is, has the uh, outrageous distinction of being uniquely targeted, and they need our help. Did you hear that? Jews make up only 2.4% of the American public, yet they make up 60% of all hate crime victims. And that was last year, so it's probably way higher even now. So explain to me why now all of a sudden the White House is announcing this national strategy to combat Islamophobia when the real issue here is that Jews are under attack across the country, across the world. I'll tell you why. It has to do with the radical left base of the Democratic Party, which is anti-Semitic. Here's what squad member Congresswoman Cori Bush tweeted just the other day from her official congressional account, accusing Israel of a, quote, ethnic cleansing campaign. Yet, where was the condemnation of this by the Biden administration? Oh, that's right. Only MAGA Republicans can be the bad guy. Only if MAGA Republicans protest in the streets or go into the Capitol should they be thrown in prison for years on end. The Democrat hypocrisy, it really knows no bounds. This is all about remaining in power, guys, not what's right or wrong or even the rule of law. You see, most U.S. Muslims are Democrats. Only 11 percent of Muslims identify as Republican. 41 percent identify now as Democrat. Joe Biden is now, of course, facing a lot of criticism from his radical left base amid the war on Hamas. They think he's not going far left enough because he's not accusing Israel of a war crime, a genocide or asking for a ceasefire. But don't worry, during a campaign event yesterday, radical lefties, Biden was confronted by a so-called rabbi. Wow, she's a beauty. Or is that is she? Um, asking why he won't call for a ceasefire. Mr. President, if oh you my care God. about Jewish people as a rabbi, I need you to call for a ceasefire right now. No, sit down. Get down! Get down! Mr. President, Oh, my God. So Joe responded, and in his true fashion, trying to appease the radical left, he's now asking for a pause. Biden replied, quote, I think we need a pause. A pause means give time to get the prisoners out. Wake up, Joe. You can't give monsters a pause to regroup because that's exactly what they'll do. They'll want to eradicate, not coexist with Israel. Why can't you guys get that through your head? Here's Hamas leader Khalid Mashal on Turkish TV. 7 October, فتحت طريق الأوتوستراد هاي واي كبير نحو إزالة إسرائيل ونحو التحرير بإذن الله واستنقاذ القدس والأقصى. All right, translation there, and he says October 7th, you know the massacre on Israel paved the highway towards the removal of Israel. Oh, wait, guys, the interview gets even better. If you ever wondered who supports Hamas, wonder no more. وأنا أيضا أخاطب يعني موسكو بكين أخاطب روسيا والصين موقفهم جيد وكان موقف الأمم المتحدة وموقف السياسي لكن هذه دول كبيرة عظمة تستطيع أن تفعل أكثر. Yep, he praised Russia and China's political positions, calling them superpowers who can do more. Oh, and he also praised Osama bin Laden's mentor. Great guy there. 